Argus, antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chemistry Camp with me, your student ambassador. Chemistry. Chemistry. It's a great subject, and I'm not asking you to love it. I'm asking you to try. Today, I'm just going to go over some basics because whether you like it or not, chemistry is a part of healthcare. And if you can understand the basics of chemistry, it'll really help you in your medical career. Okay, so the first and most basic aspect of chemistry is none other than the periodic table. So let's look at it. Okay, so as you see on the left side are your metals, metalloids, and transition metals. They're in the bluish and greenish colors. On the right side are your, are your non-metals, excuse me, your non-metals. On the right side are your non-metals. And these are in the pink reddish color, okay? The rows are called periods. Rows go across. Columns go up and down. They're called groups. As you see across the top, each column is categorized according to a group number. 1A, 2A, 3A, blah, 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 4A, 5A. A group or family of elements have similar properties. Let's zoom in on lithium. Okay, lithium. The numeric value on top of the letters that the element stands for, in this case Li, is your atomic number. The atomic number is the amount of protons in that element. The bottom number, which is usually a decimal number, is the atomic mass. That's the mass of the element. Is lithium a metal or non-metal? Metal! Congratulations! about the smallest particle in an element. It's an atom. Electrons are negatively charged. Protons are positively charged. So the atomic number indicates how many protons are in the nucleus of an atom. Atoms are neutrally charged. So the, atom, the number of protons has to equal the number of electrons. Back to my friend lithium. Lithium has the atomic number three. That means it has three protons and three electrons in an atom of lithium. Electrons have energy levels, and those are orbitals around each atom, okay? So around each atom there are orbitals, and those orbitals contain a certain amount of electrons. I don't know why I keep doing this with my phone. Each orbital can contain a certain amount of electrons. The first orbital around can contain a maximum of two. The next orbital around can contain a maximum of eight. And the last orbital around can contain a maximum of, maximum of 18. So depending on the group number is what is on the very last orbital. Let's take a look at oxygen. Why not? We need oxygen to breathe, don't we? Oxygen is in group number 6A, which means it has 6 in its most outer orbital. So if it has 6 in its most outer orbital, how many do you think it has in its other orbital? What's the atomic number for oxygen? It's 8, which means it has 8 protons and 8 electrons. So if there's 8 electrons total and it's in group 6A, that means there's going to be 6 in the outer layer. So if there's 6 in the outer layer, how many do you think are in the inner layer? Dose. Because it can only fit 2. Make sense? What? They do. The octet rule. Number 8. Octet. Get it? Okay. So the octet rule means that each atom wants to have eight electrons around it. They want to achieve that number of valence shell electrons. If one atom has two valence shell electrons and another atom has six valence shell electrons, what do you think is going to happen? Bing! Making an ionic bond. They're going to bond together and become one. For example, sodium chloride. Take sodium, Na. There is one valence shell electron. You know that because it's in group 1A. And chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7A, so there's 7. So what does 7 plus 1 equal? Hold on, let me get my calculator. Okay, 7 plus 1 equals 8. So that means that it achieves sodium chloride comes together, forming your table salt, and that equals um, 8, your octet rule. That's the basics of it, people. Figure out the rest on your own. Okay. So what's a mole? No, it's not that thing on Cindy Crawford's face. No. A mole is a unit of measurement, just like a dozen eggs is a unit of measurement. In chemistry, we use the mole 
as a unit of measurement to measure how many ions or molecules or atoms are in a given element. A mole and that number is always the same and that's called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Avocado. Avogadro's number. One mole of oxygen is the same and one mole of Hydrogen is the same, and one mole of, well, you get it. Okay? So it's just a unit of measurement. That is about all the energy I have for today, chemistry friends out there in the world. But keep in mind that we'll have another chemistry camp soon, and we can talk about organic chemistry, which is extremely important when talking about nursing and medical stuff. But it's always important to have a background in inorganic chem, which is what we sort of just did, quick overview, and uh, just to get the basics down. Organic chemistry is fun. So, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time on... Chemistry camp. Ones of which the news has come to Harvard, and there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. Uh.